Okay, a valid epistemological warrant for the supernatural. Now, I may have already covered this before, but I need to lay down the strong foundation for the journey we are together, so I need to cover it kind of thoroughly. Yeah, we're on a journey together. You didn't know that? Well, now you know. <laughs> now you know. Okay, so, a valid epistemological warrant for the supernatural. Let's take, the, let's take pain, for example. If you hit somebody's hand with a hammer, Pain is a subjective experience. If you hit my hand with a hammer, you know, pain, the pain experience will be subjective. Now, if you're dealing with me, you know, kind of hardcore, kind of badass, kind of a tough guy, yeah, rough and tough, if I do say so myself, hit my hand with a hammer, pff, pff, I'll be like Patrick Strait, Swayze, and Roadhouse. Hit my hand with a hammer, I'll be like, pain don't hurt. Try it, hit my hand with a hammer. Pff, that all you got? Homie, please. Yeah, go make me a sandwich. <laughs> See, I'm just gonna be rough and tough. Like, wow, that's hardcore. That's hardcore, Rabbi. Yeah, it's pretty hardcore, rough and tough. Um, now, another person, little girly man, hit his hand with the hammer. <laughs> Starts grinding his eyes out. Why? Because pain is a subjective experience. We're crystal clear on that, right? Okay. But pain is a subjective experience, but it is rooted in concrete, actual occurrences, actual facts. Empirically discoverable, empirically, empirical facts. A hammer hits the hand, damages the nerve ending, sending pain signals to the brain, yada, yada, yada. So it is how you interpret the pain is subjective, but the facts causing the pain are objective, actually occurring facts. Now, let's move the conversation to the supernatural so we can see if there is a valid epistemological warrant for the supernatural. That is what we are trying to find. And again, I think I've covered this before, but I need to be kind of thorough laying the groundwork. So, when I became a Christian, the night in question I became a Christian, I went to a church. Because my wife invited me to the church that night. I wanted to get out of work, so I went, sure, I'll go. Not open mind, not expecting, not expecting anything all that revelatory one way or the other. Just expecting to go there, be a little bored, come home. I go, and I had a powerful supernatural experience according to me now that's subjective okay but i but the part that you will agree with is that i had a religious experience and it was for me transformational i, I was 100 percent convinced that the holy spirit of god on the night in question had revealed to me that jesus was who he said he was so you're with me so far we both agree on the facts in question I'm not telling you, we're, we're not agreeing that it was actually God. We're just agreeing that I had an experience that I concluded that it was powerfully transformational for me, and I concluded that it was actually the Holy Spirit of God revealing to me. It was God himself that night. Now, that doesn't make it true, and that doesn't make it a valid epistemological warrant. You are in the same church on the same night. Do you experience the same thing? Maybe Maybe not. Yeah, everyone in the church would be like, ah, praise Jesus, hallelujah. And you're like, I don't know, I'm not feeling it. <laughs> you're like, what? Everyone's like, praise Jesus, hallelujah. You're like, yo, no. I'm not, honestly, guys, I'm really not feeling it. Why? I'm an atheist. This sucks. <laughs> Are we done yet? Are we almost done? <laughs> and you're just not feeling it. Same night. Same, we can, we can, we can get the actual facts of the night. How many people are in the room? I went to the room. I became a Christian that night. I had a powerful experience that night, according to me. Those are actual facts. But that experience is subjective. You could have been in the exact same room on the exact same night and not been feeling it. Now, it could be because you're hard-hearted. As the Bible says, you know, the, the ignorance that's in you, blindness, the hardness of your heart. You could just be being hard-hearted, or you could be right. I could be deluding myself. We have established nothing about the reality of the supernatural at all. And we have a problem. You and I, we do? Yeah, we have a problem. Why? Because there's almost no way to bridge the chasm between my natural experience, the natural facts we all agree on. The natural facts we all agree on, except the one or two crazy people listening to that. Nah, I don't agree. <laughs> you, were, you were in a car driving to the moon. Okay, no, that's not what happened. I was in a church, and I had an experience that I perceived as supernatural, and it turned me into a Christian. We all agree on that. Those are, the, those are the concrete, actual facts. But, I'm guessing, just call it, call it a wild stab in the dark, that you, the atheist, don't think it was really God that night. 
Am I wrong? No, you think I was deluding myself probably or whatever. You've got all sorts of explanations. You know, if you're a charitable atheist, you probably got some scientific, you know, he was, he was being coerced by the music and the atmosphere and he was, he, was, it was an attitude, he was an atmosphere of expectation, so he's expecting to receive something. All those things are actually true. And all those things can actually be used by decent preachers in the service of people having a religious experience. There is scam sometimes involved, or manipulation, emotional manipulation, let's say, involved in actual in religious experiences. We all know this. But where it gets kind of confusing is there is emotional manipulation involved in actual experiences, too. You don't just coerce people into delusions. A talented human being can coerce people into perceiving what they, they wouldn't otherwise perceive. The question is, was there an actual supernatural event or was I just perceiving something that was not? Now, if I'm trying to convince you, the atheist, if I'm trying to lay the groundwork down for you, the atheist, to see what I see, we've come up against a problem. Because the natural facts we all agree on, the supernatural we don't. And we have a problem also because a Christian apologists in time past basically try to scam you you know, I received something that night by faith. I admit that. I admit it. <laughs> it's by faith. If you say, why do you believe that's God? There's, I, 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 in all honesty, I have to answer you at least somewhat by faith. And that's what you don't want to hear. Well, that's not faith. Faith is believing something without evidence. See, you, you sound like Richard Dawkins right now. Well, no, not really. That's terrible Richard Dawkins. You don't want to hear that. We are looking for a valid epistemological warrant. Now, apologists in times past, the, the, you know, William Lane Craig on the same subject, same idea, well, kind of tries to scam you, so does Alvin Plantana. They, they, talk of, they try to dress up the fact that they are believing something by faith with philosophical sounding, scientific sounding language. They'll talk about how if my beliefs are properly basic, then it follow, you know, logically follow, doesn't logically follow. I received something that, that night by faith. I admit that. The question is, how do I demonstrate or show that it was something that really happened? And you say, can't be done. Well, not so fast, cowboy. Not so fast. It perhaps can be done. And this is why I laid the groundwork for you. Perhaps. We're going to embark on a journey. Jordan Peterson lit up the candle. And he's the one who showed me the way in this. There is a potential... I'm not going to overshoot the mark and say, oh, I got it, I proved God, because that would be not completely honest. But I think I found the potential for an actually valid supernatural warrant to demonstrate conclusively so that we all are agreeing on the established facts that that was in fact a divine presence for real, in the real world, that was the divine entering the real world and I was perceiving something that happened in reality, not deluding myself to, um, you know, not just imagining something. I think I found it. And that's the journey we are going to embark on. We are going to try to, to, to together, because this is a cooperation. <laughs> Because because we're co <laughs> All right, never mind. Together, we are going to try to find a valid epistemological warrant for a supernatural occurrence. We're going to examine it, and we're going to see. You know, is can that actually be demonstrated to be really God and not my just my imagination? Or whatever. I don't, I'm not even sure what, you, what atheists say. I've never heard the atheists say what happened. I'm guessing that you'll say, uh, I can take a guess that you'll say, well, it was a combination of, I was coerced into the experience by the, the setting, by my past, and all these types of things. That's, there's probably truth in that. But here's, here's the problem with coercion as, a, as, a, as rights off the experience. Okay. Coercion doesn't necessarily mean it didn't happen. Doesn't mean it, it doesn't mean it didn't occur. It doesn't. And you might be in the same room and not have the same experience. Also doesn't mean it didn't occur. There is a part of this that is subjective. What we're going to try to do is weed that part out. 
So we're just dealing with the objective facts. This is where Jordan Peterson comes in. So uh, 